Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. As you can hear from the sound of my voice, I am sick. Um, so I'm going to try to get through this as easily as possible because it is tis the season to get your uh, flu shot and whatnot. So um, I want to talk a little bit about weather. I want to talk about a little bit about other things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. So let's kick things into gear with uh, some weather. It is currently 34 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 51. Your low is going to be 34. Uh, Saturday this weekend, you're going to be high, high, seeing highs into the 40. You're going to see some uh, rain likely. Of course, now until about the, earlier this morning, th there's going to be that dense fog advisory warning. But I didn't see much fog going into work th today, so you might want to ignore that part. But you can see that some of the weather is probably going to be in the high, maybe the 50s, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be in the high 40s today going into your weekend. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what's happening in and around the news. Uh, one of the things that are happening locally is that Ward 6 may have recount. Uh, Nick Schantz, Democratic bumped candidate for Ward 6, will have until November 19th to staff a recount which cost, could cost upwards of $2,000. Um, Team Liberty's uh, Sandra Vasecki represents, uh, in the last election, won by a slim margin of about 12-ish votes. Um, so Vasecki ran on the same ideals as current ward uh, Jesse Ramos, uh, anti-TIF and cut spending unless it's for first responders, public safety, and for infrastructure. Um, under Montana law, Shantz would have to pay for the cost of staffing to recount the operation if the vote threshold has dropped into a mandatory recount threshold of less than a quarter of a percent the re it would happen automatically and be paid by Missoula County but in this case it has not so he'll have to decide by November 19th if he wants to do a recount. Um, in state news, chronic wasting disease has jumped from deer to moose. Um, in Troy, a moose was tested positive for uh, chronic wasting disease, which makes it the sole species of moose to get it in Montana. Uh, CWD uh, was detected in white-tailed deer in Libby area earlier this year, which prompted the creation of a management zone. And within the zone, any kind of hunting has to be taken to uh, for testing, no matter what. Um, Montana Fish and Wildlife Park is taking samples from animals harvested during the hunting season this year and sending the samples to veterinary diagnostic lab at Colorado State University in Fort Collins, Colorado for testing. Of course, so far 30 white-tailed deer have been positive with CWC, five of which were hunted and 25 was were within the management zone. The hunter who begged the moose sent it out to get tested it was just curious. It was just like, oh, I wonder if this, and it did have it. So it's kind of, uh, kind of scary if you really think about it. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention noted that CWC has not been known to transmit it from wild animals to humans, pets, or livestock, but they highly recommend that you don't eat the meat from chronic wasting disease. And for those of you who don't know what chronic wasting disease is, it's basically kind of like uh, the deterioration of an animal's brain as they uh, start losing a lot of weight. Um, basically kind of like becoming a zombie. I don't know. There's, it's no real uh, kind of uh, – that's the, probably the simplest way to explain it. But, uh, of course, you know, Fish Wildlife Park will pay for testing. So if you are concerned or if you're even curious about the deer or uh, uh, kill that you've uh, made during the hunting season, you can always send it um, and the Fish Wildlife Park will pay for it. In national news, the first day of public hearings on the impeachment process has begun from G from their GOP and Dems asked questions uh, to acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, William Taylor, and George T Kent, the State Department's top official on UK Ukraine policy. Uh, Taylor claimed that they heard uh, Trump over the phone with European and UN, uh, Un Union Ambassador Gordon Sondland that tied uh, Trump to an effort to uh, pressure Ukraine and investigate former Vice President and current Vice President C candidate Joe Biden and his son Hunter. Uh, so far, uh, many of the GOP say that this is all hearsay, and they said that the credibility has to do with the fact that Ukraine comes from um, corruption as well. Jim Jordan um, from the GOP claims that Taylor and Kent had first had knowledge of any of these allegations, but when Taylor said to Ukraine's that the secretary assistant was unlikely to come if there were no public statement for support for the investigation into the conspiracy theories about Ukraine's role in the 2016 election, and Biden Sondland um, amended his and admitted he did, in fact, say that. Also, they agreed that they would uh, that there was corruption in Ukraine that the president compared to Russia, which to Taylor said the sentiment is majorly inflammatory. Um, inflammatory to all Ukrainians. Um, GOP chair member also agreed that Ukraine did uh, receive aid and had no record of investigating Joe or Hunter Biden at all. 
Um, not to mention Ukraine had nothing to do with the Russian tampering and the 2016 election. So far, GOP wants the whistleblower, who has not been named, to talk, which Dems have responded by saying that they're welcome to have Trump um, testify in exchange. All right, so... Anyways, uh, so that's kind of what's happening in and around the news today. I got some new programs going to be airing on MCAT, so you guys can check all these programs out and more. You can find them out at MCAT.org. Uh, but for, uh, without further ado, here's a little test of what you guys can see this weekend. Not, not what do you want Casey Dunning and a, an, an executive director to advocate for, but what are you willing to stand up and fight for and put some time and energy into? And so out of that, uh, we came away with a number of issues. One of them was housing. And we had this cadre of research teams that were citizen-based research teams who were becoming experts in their own lives on something that pressured them, housing. So everyday people becoming experts on this very complex issue of affordable housing, going out, talking with different executive directors, doing best practice research, all that kind of work. So recap, in 2013, uh, study the Montana Department of Transportation, Missoula County listed these as the design and structural issues with McClay Bridge. It's functionally obsolete and fractured critical. It's not able to handle the capacity currently there is what is projected in the future and in the future it's projected to about double. The unknown foundation conditions and the scour stability issues that it would not survive a hundred year flood, that a hundred year flood would take it out, that the curves and approaches violate standards and are accidental clusters, that there are deteriorating concrete and steel beams in the different components of the old bridge. It's now Restri load restricted to 11 tons. And I really wanted to depict that magic in my design on the side. So I had the two different designs. I had both the courtyard where people arrive at the castle with a view of the castle and a big fountain out front. And then the uh, dancing inside as well with the music swirling around the dancers on the tiled floor um, of the castle. So uh, I just thought that it flowed really well with the horse. Um, and Mystery has, he's a beautiful horse. He's black and everything, which I'm going to have some stars on him when I'm done. And I I just think that the glow of the colors, you know, in the night uh, where the dance would be taking place would be just excellent on him. And so far, it's looking pretty good, I think. That's how you guys can spice up season two. You get beat by it while you're drawing. <laughs> it's like you, you, the other person gets to stand behind the drawer and just boom, drop it, boom, boom, boom. We, got, we, get, a, I mean, we get a coach. And yeah. if, if you're not drawing, if you're, draw, if you're drawing a subpar, then, yeah, you get, you get hit, hit by the big pencil. Wait, is it is it actually metal? No, no it's an actual. No? Yeah, well, I mean, it is an actual. Or pencil. it's an actual pencil? Oh, like actual actual, actual pencil. Yeah, it's an actual oh, pencil. fancy. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. We have another Charlie's Angel reboot. Ooh, ooh, Charlie Ray Angels. You gotta love those. Um, uh, so, uh, the movie reboot that you didn't know it was coming until, I guess it did. I didn't even I didn't even know it was really coming out until like maybe like a week or two ago. It's like, oh, another Charlie's Angels? Okay, whatever. This movie takes an outdated premise and does it again. Um, from what I saw in the trailer, it looks like these ladies use their feminine charge to get the man. The man being the bad guy, so men are bad. Uh, the story follows three women on their quest to blow the whistle on things, bad guys things, things that are going to explode in spy action movie, Ocean's 8, Sid Magnolia kind of thing. Moving on, uh, Ford versus Ferrari. For the From the time that cars were made, we've just kind of wanted to go faster. And in this movie, we have a rivalry that goes fast and hard between Ford, which is known for the trunk company now, and Ferrari, which is the known for the car that you can't afford. Um, watch two businessmen go toe-to-toe -to -toe through their racers and mechanics alike in this David versus beautiful Goliath. Goliath is Italian, right? Well, well, of course, a lot of things happen in the Middle Eastern, Mediterranean areas and the ways in the Bible, blah, blah, blah. Uh, watch a racing movie with kooky characters and probably they will be win because uh, of the driver and not much of the car. Um, but hey, Ford be like, Ferrari is a bully. Let's show them who's boss. That's the movie. Uh, up next, we got con man movies tend to come around ever so often. And in this case, it has to do with a uh, uh, honeypot catches more flies than vinegar in this cloak and dagger type of movie where an old lonely woman meets a charming con artist who wants her money. But as time goes on, he 
likes her, but his past catches up with him. Oh, no! And then he must decide, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Things happen. He fights, and they get along, or some kind of truth comes out. And, yeah, it's called The Good Liar. And, yeah, um, so we get friction um, from the old lady kids and other in-laws because, hey, in-laws be like... I don't know, but uh, usually you're supposed to say, uh, insert subject here, be like, and then people usually laugh. That's usually how it works. So uh, a movie about a con man who uh, usually, you know, like any movies where they have con man, it's usually like the con person or the con fella um, ends up being con themselves. And in this case, the con is true love. All right, <laughs> moving on. Uh, so those are some of the movies that are coming out this weekend as well. There's a lot of movies. There's always a lot of movies coming out. And, yeah, just just be aware. <laughs> uh, but I do have a couple brand new art clips for you guys. And when I come back, I'm going to be talking more about some city council stuff. So I'm going to be talking about some Skyview apartments, some the Hellgate Meadows uh, um, thing that is going to be built just off of Mullen Road. But without further ado, here is a brand new art clip from the Clay Studio. All right, thanks to our very own Rick Phillips, who films uh, most of the city council meetings, um, which uh, uh, bridges me over into some city council report. Hey, you want to uh, guys know what's going on within the city of Missoula? Two major projects that are happening to house uh, both seniors and uh, general people in light um, alike. I'm, I'm not. I'm not separating the classes but skyview apartments are looking to build on residential area of course uh but the zoning uh, the change in zoning has a lot of neighbors concerned not necessarily for just the senior housing because they're they're okay with the senior housing but they are worried about the excess zoning that's being left over that could be um paved the way for uh bigger and larger development in the future so it's like they're uh, opening the door for future development in those areas that are not being developed um outside the senior Skyview apartment. So, of course, Jenny Baker, city staff, land use uh, planner, uh, answers questions about zoning just for the Skyview apartments versus a lot of the whole area as well. Right now, this is one parcel, and the zoning would apply to the entire parcel. Once the subdivision is filed, y you would essentially be asking to unzone part of it, to downzone it. So it would be another rezone request and I actually don't think that staff would support it because this actually is in compliance with the growth policy. So we wouldn't support a zoning that didn't comply with that, and most of those are RM districts. So there could be a rezone request, but I, I don't know that staff would support it going forward. And many of the reasons why they want to, don't want to support it is that when it comes to planning and uh, moving forward on this, um, they uh, are trying to do more than just uh, develop the senior housing, but also work on infrastructure, city uh, sewer hookup, and also like the church is hooked up to a septic. So they want to hook that up to the sewer and hook that up to amenities as well so they can continue developing the area as well. Um, Alex uh, Burkhalter, uh, Burkhalter uh, developer with the Skyview Apartments response to redo with the zoning. So one of the questions he asked is, like, can you redo the zoning just for this specific area they want to develop? The um, funding works is if any of the projects are not 
successful or not moving forward, then it falls to the next project. So on Monday, there was one project that didn't receive any funding. Um, and so if any of the projects, including this one, are tripped up, slowed down, stopped, then the money falls to the next one. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a, a do or die kind of situation because there was money put aside for uh, because they give um, developer um, grant. Um, you know, it's kind of like a tax credit, but in terms of for federal grants, um, and this is a way for the city to be able to um, help pay for this kind of thing moving forward, of course. Uh, the city, uh, let's see, where was I? Okay, so here is Aaron P. And Director of Housing and Community Development, talks about homing issues in general um, and about how this really helps, and by delaying this, that could have a major impact on uh, senior housing alone. To ensure we have enough affordable housing units at targeted income levels to meet our current and projected growth. We have to capitalize on low-income housing tax credits. We simply can't develop this type of affordable housing without them at a community level. And uh, housing tax credits, 4% housing tax credits save our community upwards of 40% of local investment. 9% tax credits save our community upwards of 90% of local investment. So this project would have to be essentially funded with 90% of local funds if we cannot access tax credits for this type of development. Claire. And in, in terms of uh, development as well, the cost, if you're wondering what the cost for this is, is that it, this project is worth $5.9 million in federal tax credits. And if otherwise, it would take four years to develop this with the money that's uh, that would be set aside from the city to uh, be, make this locally funded for the Skyview Apartments. And this is a good project that holds 32 units for age-restricted uh, senior living. Malcolm Lowe, who is a resident, is not okay with the process that is in place, not necessarily senior living, but the process in general. Is it asking so much to have Mr. Burkhalter reapply for just the pieces he's going to use? You have already commuted to the Board of the Housing that you will, with a straw vote, that you can do this, that you want this. Is it asking so much to redo that process, have him just rezone the pieces that he's intending to develop into this affordable housing project. I think it's a perfectly reasonable request. I think that this body can communicate to the Board of Housing that it's going forward. He'll keep his funding. He's got two years to use that money. I think that that would be the prudent thing to do. I think to ask us to assume the risk for that 0.8 acres that could be any 30 units of something else, and it's even more tucked away on a dead end street, I think that's really unwise zoning. All right, so that was uh, uh, many of the concerns of the community. Um, Melkin has mentioned that the sidewalks are needed for development with seniors, but residents shouldn't have to pay for it. Also, Gwen Jones made it clear that the council members did not do a straw poll on this project and overall lack of infrastructure in the area. The city approved this. Um, this is up on 9th Street area for development. Uh, sidewalks are underdeveloped in Missoula in general. So uh, w usually, um, from what I've, uh, from what I've uh, known from past videos and past shoots that I've done in the past is that usually one mile uh, equates to about $1 million roughly of new sidewalks. So um, John Dabari talks about projects and trying to fund all fields, not just development. This is the exact reason why we need to levy the kinds of actual costs that uh, are associated with impacts associated with uh, specific <laughs> projects. So um, I, I hope that we can work through trying to figure out a good way to address specific infill projects like this, much like we are trying to get out ahead of what's happening west of Reserve Street, which we're going to talk about next. I mean, there's obviously a demonstrated commitment to that. We put together federal funding request for a build grant to do that. We need a similar high-level capacity approach to dealing with our already built environment to make sure that it can accommodate the things that we want to have happen. And All right. So that was John Dabari. Um, it's... I mean, it's one of those things is like when you apply for a grant for money for development and you get X amount of money, you have to use that money or lose it. And a lot of times that kind of puts a lot of strain on developers to make them like because when you develop, you have like, here's the plan. And there's like, OK, here's the money. And I was like, but wait, 
you, you have to follow a certain regulations and not build too much or too little, that kind of deal. There has to be some kind of restriction there, and the developer has to like, okay, let's rewrite this to make it work with the money that we got provided. And, and then by the time they get through a lot of the red tape and, like, and stuff like that, they lose the money that was available to them. I mean, those are some of the worst case scenarios that can happen. How, but for right now, a lot of times, like there's a lot of grants and federal money going into the city of Missoula for infrastructure to help them move forward with all these pro projects which include this uh, next transition to the next statement, which um, Hellgate Meadows. Hellgate Meadows is a huge deal. It's a major undertaking in the Missoula get, uh, uh, get housing and a uh, throughway in the form of Mary Jane Boulevard, which can improve c connectivity and help alleviate some of the traffic that's on Reserve Street, which um, according to traffic studies, Missoula, Department, Missoula uh, Montana Department of Transportation uh, estimates about 48,000 cars a day use the intersection of Mullen and Reserve, and it is one of the most dangerous intersections in the state of Montana, also according to Montana Department of, Educa uh, Department of Transportation. Sorry. All right, so of course, local roads will be funded by developer and whatever uh, build grants they can get besides that $13 million build grant. So they got $13 million, they asked for $23 million, so that's $10 million short for development and uh, the costs are going to go to the developer to develop this throughway and connectivity and infrastructure that are going to be building. That's basically converting farmland into uh, residential and hookup to sewers and all that stuff. Jeremy Keen with uh, Developmental Services uh, talks a little bit more about this. You know, obviously, you know, following the 9th Street discussion, housing is a, a top concern for people in Missoula, and so we're working as the city, we're really working to be proactive in, in our housing policy and the way we plan for infrastructure. And we're doing that by, by working on freeing up land, by trying to address those gaps in the housing that, that are out there, the, the missing middle of workforce housing and, and the subsidized affordable housing piece. Um, we're, we're trying to, to facilitate projects that promote the kinds of things that, that will allow us to, to grow through transit, mixed use, walkability in the neighborhoods. And, and we're trying to lead as the city with, with infrastructure, with transportation and utility infrastructure that supports that kind of development. All right, so that was uh, Jeremy Keene talking a little bit more about that. Um, development agreement uh, is basically, uh, the city has made a deal with the developer to come up with their, um, deal with a lot of how they're going to be paying for this. They are developing this and they have to figure out how they're going to deal with this impacts, um, neighborhood impacts as well, development, so the whole idea is that there's three things they have to work with on a solution is that's neighborhood impacts, developer desires, and community needs. Uh, all have to work together solution, so it's a balancing act with three different things. Lori Flicker is worried that building um, she's a resident in the uh, Missoula area that Hellgate uh, Elementary will be beyond capacity and uh, other uh, issues that they may have in terms of infill and growth. Moved into my neighborhood, people would, the comments I get are, how do you like living so close to your neighbors? That it is very cramped, but we do have yards and I love my neighborhood. It's a, it's a positive thing. But if you do this increase, it's going to be a problem for our area. And I realize that our schools are not paid by the rest of Missoula's taxpayers. They are, we are our own tax base. And so it's only the people in our area that are going to have to deal with it. But I think you should take into consideration that this will have a, an effect in the future. And if you go with a development agreement, you are letting developers plan for the future. You're not looking at the zoning. When you did the zoning and the growth plan, that was with community input. That was people spending a lot of time. Actually, Mr. Kaufman, I believe, was on the steerage committee. So I find it interesting that people who made a growth plan and said, this is the way we want this developed and this is the density, then change it when the developers don't like it. And they can come kind of behind the scenes and put forth a development plan instead of following the regular zoning rules. All right, so uh, that was Lori Flicker talking um, about her concerns about with this development agreement. Um, she spoke, uh, of course, at the last meeting uh, that the county got the $13 million bill grant, which could put this into faster development in an area, which could be, uh, to her, which could be bad because with the amount of um, need and the amount of people that are going to be moving to the city of Missoula, according to uh, the uh, um, the growth policy, because the growth policy did address the, one of the concerns that a lot of people are moving to Missoula at a certain percentage. Uh, Ca City Councilor Amerda Becerra talks a little bit about uh, um, just uh, community needs. It's a beautiful part of town. It's not just an area that can take development. It's an area that will develop neighborhoods. These are really nice um, 
welcoming neighborhoods. I've walked <coughs> a lot of those streets lately, and um, I think we need to be very careful and intentional as to how we develop. And I would like to say that um, Mr. Kaufman has produced a plan that is that speaks to a lot of the really good planning designs, a good mix of uses. Um, it's important for all kinds of things, including uh, transportation um, alternatives. It produces that walkable neighborhood that we all like, that I have enjoyed when I walk around there. So my main concern um, all this time and now in particular is that we need to know how much money are we counting on before we, for, for uh, infrastructure development before we can actually approve anything. And it's All right. So, uh, like, like you know, I was saying before, is that there's the 13 million dollars of the build grant that would make this a lot easier and also help streamline a lot of the process when it comes to development and infrastructure. This money will go to uh, the streets connectivity, but additional funds will be done through the developer, which was which was the original agreement. So they are. Uh, going to be building the Mary Jane Boulevard, the developers, um, and they were looking to get this uh, federal build grant. They asked for $23 million. They got $13 million. Um, of course, I'm rehashing a lot of the stuff that I talked about last week, but it's also important that they're going to be um, um, talking about this on Monday the 18th for additional discussion. Let me just uh, double check that because I think... So wait, 15, 16, yeah, it's 18, sorry. <laughs> I'm just... I always have to like d doubly make sure that I wrote my notes correct. Of course... Um, one of the things that we learned from this meeting is that the city wants to restrict any buildings larger than 16 units per build. So anything that exceeds that would have to go back to the city for review. And of course, townhouses, um, attached townhouses cannot exceed eight. So you have eight attached townhouses, no more. Again, they'd have to talk to the city of Missoula as well. And this, uh, the streets are being funded through the developer upon agreement of developing this whole entire site as well. And 13 out of uh, $23 million grant makes it easier for them to pay for these streets, which uh, hopefully they're going to get started with this build project 18 months from now with the help of this $13 million. And also, we'll be applying for more build grants to help this happen because it's infrastructure and federal money does go a lot towards these kind of projects for infrastructure and whatnot. All right, so that concludes the city council report. I'll have a little bit more information because there was no city council meeting on Monday this week, but I'm gonna show you guys another art clip. And this is gonna be happening all the way until December 14th. And I believe this is at the oh, Museum of, um, Montana Museum of Art and Culture. Um, I'm sorry if I pushed that, but without further ado, here is a little taste of some art. And then when I come back, I'm gonna be talking about some events that are happening this weekend and wrapping up my show. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. Uh, it's time for Missoula events. Uh, <laughs> Friday, you know, it's a day off for a lot of the kids. Any any kids who are in kindergarten to eighth grade will be uh, welcome to go to the MCT for a play 
in a day. And usually they have performances at 9.30 p.m. for anybody interested in uh, families who are interested in seeing some of these uh, young actors come into their own as actors as well. Um, the, the theme for today is dinosaurs. Spend some time with uh, creatures large and small. Explore the not-so-average dino day with fantastic and fascinating new friends. Um, that's the theme. Uh, uh, Tiny Tales and Storytime at Missoula Public Library. Uh, starting at 10.30 a.m., uh, roughly, uh, you guys can be in the Dragon Rug, the large bean room, and this is a quite a zoo with a bunch of kids interacting with books and learning how to read and learning to associate pictures with words. It's awesome. Spectrum Discovery Center is doing weather and climate. It's 3.50 if you're uh, four and over. If you're under three, you get in free. It is a wonderful uh, um, learning environment where kids get to go to many stations and just learn and pick up things. Kidomatic Children's Film Festival is going to be at the Roxy. It's a four days of excellent short and feature length international fa films for families at the Roxy Theater. This long weekend of family fun includes a camp designed for working parents and um, invitation and Inventive kids who love movies and making movies. Register with the Zach. These are films for everybody from three years old to 100. Recommended for ideal audiences. Ages are included in the film details. Uh, boys and Glue Clubs, special interest groups, teams, clubs, or any special discount bulk rates and a limited amount of underwriting for tickets is available. Uh, so the status of grizzly bears. Hey, you know, like the big thing in Montana is like they want to delist a lot of the grizzly bears and figure out exactly how they're going to do it. So you guys get to learn about the status of the grizzly bear at the University of Montana starting at 12 today. Um, so leading uh, bear experts present their views on grizzly bears recovery and take questions from the public. Let me just double check because the University of Montana is fairly big. Let me just... Do one thing about it. I believe it's going to be at the 32. Uh, oh, it's a. Uh, it's at the University Center, room 330. So if you're interested in doing that, go to the UC, go to the third floor, and just kind of go down past the uh, theater. And um, it's in those offices. You can't miss it. It's it's generally in that area. So if you're interested in learning more about the the state of the grizzly bear in Montana, you can learn more about that, and you can ask questions like, "What's the state of the grizzly bears in Montana?" <laughs> Family fun time at the YMCA starting at 3.30. Uh, they have a bunch of events happening Tuesdays, Thursdays from 9 to 11.30, Fridays from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Most uh, early days are 9 to about 12-ish, 12, 12 so you can check all those out at the YMCA. Um, Meet Your Mama, Zootown Arts Community Center, is doing a celebration of local music and the impacts that it inspires. Mama brings artists, collaborators, music advocates to light to recognize their dedication to a thriving musical community, a night of Missoula music, music lovers and visionaries join as they introduce Mama. Twelfth night, um, Brimley with some of Shakespeare's most poetic and a beloved language, as well as multiple um, earnest love stories and affecting themes to identify time and healing for loss. Twelfth night uh, more than deserves its recognition as a bard's most popular comedy. The play's title referenced the end of Christmas season, which often celebrated with a temporary suspicion of rules and social order, masters and servants, wise and foolish, men and women, all overturn convention in this course of this warm, witty, wonderful production. Twelfth Night, Shakespearean play, University of Montana, 7.30 tonight, but also they have uh, 7.30 uh, showings on Saturday and Sunday. They'll be doing this for, I believe, two weeks. They usually run two weeks long, and they'll also have a matinee around 2 p.m. on Sundays, so you can check all that out and more. All right. Desmet is doing a garage sale on Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. Desmet School from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. proceeds go towards Desmet School eighth graders on their close-up trip to Washington D.C. and Philadelphia. Uh, items may drop be dropped off uh, now from three. To, uh, actually, I think it's already too late for items to be dropped off. Forget about that. But they're gonna have a garage sale on tomorrow. <laughs> Vain assessment. Hey, uh, Missoula Surgical Associates at the St. Pat's Hospital. Um, this is not cosmetic. It's a chronic medical condition that can get worse. So if you have varicose veins and vein um, issues, you know, uh, so if you have symptoms such as leg, leg aches and pains, heaviness, rest, uh, restlessness, swelling, skin, decoloration, wounds that won't heal, or visible uh, bulging veins, um, if you are unsure your veins are considered varicose veins or spider veins, uh, it, you can go to St. Pat's. It's on the fifth floor. There's an elevator. You can't miss it. Um, Pre-registration is required. You can call them at... Uh, 542-7525. Again, that number is 542-7525. For more information, you can go to info at msurgical.com. Again, you can email them info at msurgical.com.
Uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation is doing a kids d event for game day. Rocky Mountain Elk F Foundation is free Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation kids event day. It's laser shot play games and explore the visitor center from 11 to 1 p.m. MCAT Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m. For $10 your, uh, for ten dollars per kid or $15 for siblings, your kids can enjoy our Saturday drop-ins, which includes stop animation, live action movie making. It's all fun with a fun creative environment with uh, trained staff on Final Cut Pro, um, stop animation studio, and more. Um, open hours in the makerspace of the Music Public Library. 2 to 6 p.m., hey, it's a great way to 3D print. It's, if you're interested in 3D printing or getting something 3D printed, Makerspace is a good th place to go, but there's more than just 3D printing. Um, and then skipping way ahead for Saturday night is the Mountain Running Film Festival. Log Jam presents is a mountain running film festival at the Wilma. Tickets are on sale at the Top Hat. Um, it's, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's a mount uh, mountain running film festival. It's happening uh Saturday night at 8 p.m. at the Woman. Of course, Sunday, I wanted to uh, mention that they're auditioning at MCT. If you ever wanted to act in the in a community theater, uh, Sunday at MCT, which is off-Broadway, uh, starting at 1 p.m., they'll be doing a auditions for uh, Farce Leading Ladies. Um, it's called Leading Ladies, and you use the Main Street entrance. Uh, it's for um, a, a adults age 18 and up from 1 to 4 p.m. with a callback later that same evening. So they're looking for adults, for leading ladies, and it's uh, yeah, it's open audition for anybody in the community. All right, so that pretty much does it for all your events. If you are interested in finding more events, I just kind of highlighted the events because there's so many events that happen every single weekend. MissoulaEvents.net is your source for what's happening in Missoula. Hey, what's going on, Missoula? And we'll go to this website. Bada boom. All right, so that pretty much does it. There's not much else I can say, but I will say goodbye. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I hopefully will feel a lot better. Uh, my voice is a little hoarse. Maybe uh, it's a little deeper, which it, it's not that bad if it's deeper. So without further ado, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. I hope you guys have a good weekend. Mm -hmm.